Good morning and welcome to our service of morning prayer, Rite 1, St. John's Virtual Church. Our service begins on page 2 of your bulletin. O send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me, and bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open now our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O come, let us adore him. Let us say Psalm 26 together, alternating by whole verse. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. 
Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Canticle 6, Glory be to God. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards all. We praise thee, we worship thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We as humans love the idea of an ideal community, of some utopia that's out there. How many pro people and projects over time have tried to create that perfect place, that ideal community to live in? It's there in our myths. It's there in the biblical story of Eden. It's there in myths of Atlantis and Shangri-La, these long sought after and hoped for places where people live in peace and harmony. 
these perfect places. Any number of religious groups and sects have tried to recreate it. Think of here in New England, the Shakers. Elsewhere, these visions of monasteries, of ashrams, of Tolstoyan communities, any of these places that have sprung up trying to create a small pocket of perfection in the midst or separate from this world. And we can look to literature as well. The Society is a Brave New World in 1984, these places that were meant to keep everyone happy, to hold everything together, to be a utopia. I think of the free love communes of the 60s, and I think of those places in my own life that I've turned into utopias when I look back on them. I think about groups of friends in high school and college, those sort of summers as a high school student with no cares or responsibilities in the world, and how much fun those times were. I also think of the utopian promise of social media, ideas behind Facebook, Twitter, these places that were meant to be purely democratic, open and free exchanges of ideas, sort of utopias of conversation, and how we've seen those dreams shattered in the past few years. At some point, all of these utopias, these perfect places, are challenged by questions of how they relate to the world around them. Many of them end up walling themselves off from the world, separating themselves from everything that is deemed outside the bounds. They choose separation from the world over participation in it. Life inside the group is good, life outside it is bad. They kind of oversimplify these stories of what is good and what is evil, what is in and what is out. In this powerful short story that she wrote, Ursula Gwen, Ursula Le Guin writes that about this utopia. The story is called Leaving Omelas. And in this utopia, the walls of it have to be maintained in order for the project to succeed. That the citizens of this ideal place are happy within its walls. But as soon as they leave the walls, leave the bounds of this carefully constructed city, there's nothing for them. The happiness disintegrates, that they are left alone in the wilderness. I think in a lot of ways, our reading today from Romans is this sort of project creates this vision of a utopia, of an ideal community. It sounds really lovely, these words about living with patience, with understanding, with mutual respect, living in peace and harmony, with lo love overcoming evil, of sharing what we have with one another. Paul is imagining this perfect community a community that is formed and shaped in the image of Christ. A community in which love reigns, which people are patient, where there's harmony. And Paul is also concerned with how this community is to relate to the world outside. But where his vision may differ from other utopias is that it's not just enough for him to attend to the needs of the group, to be this island in a sea of the rest of the world. But for Paul, the boundaries of this ideal community are meant to be porous. They are to welcome the stranger, to show hospitality to others. The followers of Jesus aren't just to focus on their own problems. And we hear that in our gospel today, when Jesus says these harsh words to Peter, get behind me, Satan and tells him that he is not focusing on divine things, but human things, and chastises it for him. Peter wants Jesus to remain with the disciples as he has been. But Jesus knows that his fate is otherwise, that he has to make that journey to the cross and to the resurrection in order for the love that he has shown to those immediately around him to extend to the entire world. He must suffer, he must die, he must be resurrected in order for those boundaries of who is in and who is out to collapse and for the love to be offered freely to all. The words that Paul writes to the church in Rome 
are not just some self-improvement guide for how to be a slightly better, more welcoming community. He's not laying out a five-year plan for how to become a more inclusive church. What he's doing is something more radical. He's inviting the church in Rome to be transformed by their life in Christ. Each word that he writes, each admonition that he gives them, is an attempt to make meaning of Jesus' death and resurrection and to invite this small community of followers to be shaped by it, to be shaped by the love that they have known in the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's encouraging them to let God's love transform their lives. He's encouraging them to become the beloved community of people baptized into Jesus' love, life, and death. Paul's vision for the church in Rome is that of God's beloved community. They are to be, as we say in our final prayer each Sunday, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the Spirit. But being this beloved community doesn't mean closing themselves off from the outside world. No, instead they are to weep with those who weep, mourn with those who mourn, feed the hungry, welcome the stranger, rejoice with those who rejoice. And I think that vision of Christian community isn't just for the church in first century Rome. That vision's been alive throughout Christian history. It's at the heart of the rule of St. Benedict and the history of monastic communities that sought ways to live together to achieve these ideals of what it means to be a community shaped by the love of God. It's there in the work, the prophetic witness of Martin Luther King Jr., for whom this image of the beloved community was a rallying cry that he he used to bring all kinds of people around him. It was there in the writings and teachings of Dorothy Day Jean Vanier and the large communities that he formed to create a safe and inclusive space for people with mental disabilities. It was there in the work of the recently deceased Congressman John Lewis. All of these people held a vision of Christian community utterly transformed by the love of God. This week in her daily reflection Martha Byam selected a quote from John Lewis that has just really resonated with me throughout this week, words that have stuck with me as I've been reading these readings and and preparing for this sermon. John Lewis in his book writes, You are a light. You are the light. Never let anyone, any person, or any force dampen, dim, or diminish your light. Study the path of others, to make your way easier and more abundant. Lean towards the whispers of your own heart, discover the universal truth, and follow its dictates. Release the need to hate, to harbor division, and the enticement of revenge. Release all bitterness. Hold only love, only peace in your heart, knowing that the battle of good to overcome evil is already won. Choose confrontation wisely, but when it is your time, don't be afraid to stand up, speak, and speak out against injustice. And if you follow your truth down the road to peace and the affirmation of love, if you shine like a beacon for all to see, then the poetry of all the great dreamers and philosophers is yours to manifest in a nation, a world community, a beloved community that is finally at peace with itself. He doesn't name Christ or the church explicitly in this, but his words are suffused with the imagery that we hear from the gospel. They're shaped by the love of Christ that he knew within his own life and wished to see manifest in the world around him. I've seen that kind of beloved community only in glimpses. It comes in moments. I've seen it in a community of nuns in Tennessee who, though small in number, were committed to that work of hospitality, of creating a safe space where anyone could come and worship and be fed and receive the spiritual nourishment that they so desperately needed. 
I saw it the summer that I spent as a camp chaplain, seeing kids from all over Massachusetts and parts of New Hampshire come together in this new space and to create a beloved community while enjoying the beauty of creation all around them. I've seen it at the Catholic Worker House in Hartford, committed to serving the underserved of that city, of welcoming folks in, of creating a space where people could learn, where they could come together, break bread, and be together. I see it every Thursday at Common Table. Just this past Thursday, it was like holy chaos out there. The family's first health van was out there for the first time in months, and the lunch came and there was already a line waiting, and it was this beautiful image of beloved community, of people serving one another, of sharing a meal, sharing good food, and sharing company with one another. And while we can see this beloved community in glimpses, we don't always get it right. And we haven't for ever. I and mean, Paul wouldn't be writing this letter to the Romans if that were the case. He's writing them to encourage them to live up to these ideals that they have encountered in the gospel of Christ. But holding on to this vision of an ideal community, reading these words from Paul, reading the words of the gospel, help remind us who we want to be, who we strive to be, who God is calling us to be. It reminds us of who we can be if we let ourselves be transformed by the love of God, the love that brought Jesus to the cross and brought him up again out of the grave, the love that spread through those first Christian communities. I think the challenge for me, the challenge for St. John's and for our country, for our world, is to allow ourselves to be made into that beloved community, to put down our fear and hatred, our tendency towards resentment and revenge, to let go of the privileges that bind us, that blind us to see the suffering of our neighbor, and to see ourselves as one member, as a, a member of one human family, all of us equally dependent on one another. Our salvation is bound up with one another's. And I pray that we may practice what Paul preaches, that we may be transformed in Christ, that we be, may be made into that beloved community and respond to the evil in our world with love, with humility, with compassion. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. 
and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of thy name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruits of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to who, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord. Grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who did stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of thee. For the honor of thy name. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession, of thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. Just take a moment to pray for Jacob Blake, for his family, for the people of Kenosha, Wisconsin. We pray for the people of Louisiana. We draw all of our prayers together in the words of the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that we hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we may show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Hi, again, welcome and thank you for worshiping with us today. Just, I'd like to offer a few announcements. There's a lot that's going to be coming up in St. John, at St. John, so please keep your eye out for the Sunday and Thursday emails that will contain more information. Um, just a few things that are coming up sooner. Next Sunday, September 6th, we are going to have a virtual coffee hour at 10 a.m. And so the information will go out in the announcements with a Zoom link. So this is just a time for us to get together at the end of the summer and as, as families, as kids are going back to school and as we enter into some of our fall programming. It's time for us to kind of talk about what's coming up at St. John's, but also just to be together. So I encourage you all to join us for that. 
This week, you probably got an email about ACS Realm. This is our new directory and people management program. It's going to completely change the way that we are able to keep tabs on, on who is a, a part of this community and, and to track information about folks. But it requires a little more work on your part. So I encourage you just to, when you get that email, to follow the link, to sign up, to enter your information, and just make sure that we know how to get in touch with you, that you know how to get in touch with us. Another thing coming up, over this coming year, I think we're going to focus a lot on just what's going on in our world, the reality of racial injustice and how we are all invited as Christians to be the beloved community and to respond to it in our midst. And so we're going to start a dialogue series called Sacred Ground that's a curriculum put out by the Episcopal Church and create a circle, a group of about 10 or so people we can make multiple groups if there's a lot of interest. But it's just a chance to dive deep, to engage in these conversations around race and faith. So if you have questions or want more information, reach out to me. We don't have a set start date because this, group, this program really demands a lot of buy-in from those who are participating. That will happen once we kind of have a group put together. So please reach out for more information. And as always, thank you. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you for worshiping with us on Sunday mornings or whenever you are watching the service. And thank you for your continued financial support of St. John's. We couldn't do any of this without you. Let us pray together a prayer for the power of the Spirit among the people of God. God of all power and love, we give you thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and with those you love this day and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thou that takest away the sin, we should start over. Okay. <laughs> I skipped a bit. <laughs> <laughs>